Welcome to the Bakersfield City Council meeting. This television broadcast is brought to you by the local cable companies, the County of Kern and the City of Bakersfield. You can watch the rebroadcast of this meeting Saturday at 7 p.m., Sunday at 10 a.m., and the following Wednesday at 7 p.m. You can download the agenda for this meeting at www.bakersfieldcity.us. Presiding over this evening's meeting, the Honorable Karen Go. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to call to order the 515 City Council meeting of November 1st, 2017. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Mayor Go. Here. Vice Mayor Smith. I am here. Councilmember Rivera. Councilmember Gonzalez. Here. Councilmember Weir. Here. Councilmember Freeman. Here. Councilmember Sullivan. Here. Councilmember Parlier. Here. Well, what a wonderful day to see um, all of you out there and so many young people. We have some special guests with us. Um, I'll be stepping down as mayor so somebody else can take over. We have a teen city government day here. And how wonderful that we have representatives from many of our high schools who have been learning about city government. And they will play a part in today's agenda. So right now it is my honor to be able to introduce the student mayor, Savannah Basconcillo, and she's gonna share a little bit about herself. Uh, my name is Savannah Basconcillo. I go to Independence High School. My college goal is either to uh, attend the Air Force Academy or go to USC. My career goal is to be an officer in the Air Force. Um, my GPA, cumulative GPA, is 4.13. Um, I have received an Academic Excellence Achievement Award freshman through my junior year. Um, my school activities um, involve ASB Vice President. I'm also the Vice President of the Ecology Club. I am a Blood Drive Ambassador. I am a National Honor Society member. I am the Vice President of Mu Alpha Theta. And um, I'm also a cheerleader. My hobbies include exercising and hanging out with my family and my friends. My interests include anything with the environment or math, and I also love cheering. My community service, um, I serve as a blood drive ambassador at my school. I served as a youth cheer coach. I also served as a link crew member, a church shepherd, and I also do a bunch of community service through NHS. And I am also the grad week representative of my school. Is that all? <laughs> it's fantastic, fantastic. And uh, USC, it's a fantastic choice. Do you have family here? Yes, I do, my dad's here. Your dad's here. So can you just wave, Dad? Thank you for uh, this wonderful uh, future leader, or current leader and future leader. So now we would like to have our um, Ward one is not here, but would you go ahead? Oh, he is here now. There you are, Council Member Rivera. Would you introduce your council member? I needed extra time to put my jersey on. I think that's why I was late. So here I have uh, Savannah Poulos, who is from Centennial High School. Um, and uh, she's got high aspirations to go to much better schools than I did. Here she is. Hi, I'm Savannah. Um, I would love to go to Pepperdine or Syracuse University. Uh, my career goal is to be involved in public relations. I'm involved in many activities at my school. I'm the ASB president right now. I'm our spirit crew, um, known as Red Zone leader. And in my virtual business class, I'm the advertising specialist. Um, my hobbies and interests include filming videos. I love editing and posting and recording videos. And I'm involved in a lot of community service with the Bakersfield Fire Department Relief Association. That's me. Thank you for being here. And do you have uh, family or relatives, friends here uh, today? Yeah, my dad's here. All right, wave. Thank you, Dad. All right, very good. <laughs> Councilmember Gonzalez. Thank you, Mayor Go. Um, my guest today is from the awesome East High School, Go Blades. Um, Monse Garcia is our student representing War Two. Good evening, my name is Monse Garcia and I am the AZ president at East Bakersfield High School. My college goal in California is UC Davis, UCLA or USC and outside are Georgetown and UPenn. 
My career goal involves two majors, and that is agri agriculture, business, slash law, and of course in the city of Bakersfield. My overall GPA is a 4.33, and I am currently in the running for valedictorian. I have been a recipient of principal honors reception sophomore all the way to my senior year. My school activities, of course, involved ASB presidency, We the People, mock trial, National Honor Society, also known as Blade Family Honors, Spanish Honor Society, CSF, member of School Site Council, Environmental Club, and East High Mariachi. Hobbies and interests, music, orchestra and mariachi, of course, and sports, cross country and tennis. And community service involved. The summer of 2017, I was able to be a part of Andre Gonzalez Children's First Campaign, and most of my service is done in church, volunteer music, a volunteer in the music group, and once again in the mariachi group. Councilmember Weir. Thank you, Mayor. I'm pleased to introduce Anthony Solis from Foothill High School. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Anthony Solis, and I'll be presenting at uh, Foothill High School. Um, I am the ASB president at Foothill High School. Um, my, future, my future career is to be able to help um, the kids uh, in the future. I would like to be a, a school counselor or be involved in administrator, administration of my school, which is Bo High School. So that's one of my goals. And my hobbies is to be, uh, I like to run, but I also be, I'm also creative. I like doing things in my room, I like be able to do posters and like last minute things for my school. Uh, my interests, I love, to, I love taking pictures. I like to edit them and be able to post them on my account on Instagram. <laughs> I want to share my church a lot. This summer, I was able to go to um, Costa Rica, which was an amazing experience. I was able to build um, a church and help with the kids, and they were amazing. It was an amazing experience. At school, I'm involved in FFA, um, FCA, which is Fellowship of Christian Athletes. I'm in CSF, and one of my last things is community service. Uh, I, I volunteer at church, and so my GPA is a 3.5. I'm in honors. And, and I'm in CSF. That's it. You have family here? Yeah, my mom's right there. Mom? It's mom. Hey, welcome, Anthony. Good job. Councilmember Smith. Thank you. My student is Sadie Armijo from Highland High School. She plans on going to Northridge, and I would like to say to her and all these other students, please come back to Bakersfield. You're a great community asset, and we'd love to see you back after you go to college. Here she is. Hello, I'm Sadie Armijo. I'm from Highland High School. For um, college, I am verbally committed to play soccer at Cal State University of Northridge. I plan on getting my bachelor's in psychology and pursuing a career in medicine. Um, I'm a student athlete with a 4.25 GPA. I'm currently first in class. Um, I've qualified for CSF and academic awards for maintaining a 4.0 or higher for every semester of high school. I've received the Jockey Club Outstanding Athlete Award for soccer, and today I received the Glennon Rogers Award for Excellence in Scholarship, Leadership, and Community Service. Um, for school, I am on varsity volleyball and the var varsity volleyball and soccer team. I've been on ASB for two years. I've been in Link Crew for two years. I've been the Scrub Club President for two years. I'm currently Volleyball Club President, Soccer Club Vice President. And uh, my hobbies, I enjoy working out and lifting with my dad and my brother, playing sports, reading, and watching movies. And for community service, I have volunteered with Relay for Life, the Ronald McDonald House, um, the Nate Foundation for Pediatric Brain Cancer, and I've organized a school-wide um, collection of toiletries and books for the elderly during the winter season. Welcome. Well, welcome. That's Quite an accomplishment. Councilmember Freeman. Um, I don't know if I ever knew anyone who had a 4.0. <laughs> so I'm, I'm in awe up here of all of, uh, of all of you. But I'd like to introduce Leanne McQueen, probably related to Steve McQueen. You probably don't even know who Steve McQueen is. <laughs> uh, oh, good, good, from, uh, from Liberty. And I'm going to let Leanne tell you about herself and her future. Hi, my name is Leanne McQueen. I'm from Liberty High School. Um, my college goal is to go to Cal Poly Pomona and major in civil engineering. And then ultimately, I'd like to use civil engineering in the missionary field. 
Um, I'm currently at the top of class with a weighted 4.5 GPA. Um, I was part of the first place super quiz team in the Physics Olympics and am in running for valedictorian. I am the recipient of the Glendon Rogers Award and won the Spirit and Interview Award in Distinguished Young Woman last year. Um, I am the ASB Club Commissioner and have been an ASB for my four years at Liberty. I'm the President of FCA, Treasurer of Bible Club, and the Deputy CEO of our business for Honors Economics. Some of my interests are and hobbies is that I like to coach volleyball at Club Jamba. Um, I'm involved in my church youth group and I really like outdoor activities and playing sports for fun. Um, I also like taking trips to Lake Buena Vista. For community service, I'm in the Four Dimension program. I also um, am very passionate about special needs and volunteer with a special needs ministry at our church. And I've also um, ran the school-wide community service project for the second time this year at Liberty High School. Are, you, are your parents here tonight? They're not. Oh, okay. Well. Okay, well, welcome. <laughs> Fantastic. Councilmember Sullivan. Uh, yes, my, uh, first of all, an outstanding group of young people. And my student is um, Fernando Argueta from South High School. Fernando. Hello, good evening. Uh, my name, uh, like I said, is Fernando Argueta. I'm from South High School. Um, college, my college goal is going to USC under a biology major. Uh, my career goal is um, going into becoming an autoimmune disease specialist. Um, my GPA is a 4.01 cumulative. Um, school activities I'm involved in is I am ASB president this year. I am part of the engineering and science and math academy at my high school. I am part of the, I am a blood drive ambassador. I've been part of Link Crew, um, band and swimming, also as well as club swimming. Um, my interests and hobbies are I love listening to music, playing music, um, physical exercise, helping others most importantly, um, as well as traveling and then just hanging out with friends. Um, community services, I've been part of Teens for Jeans, all you can do is, um, I started Really for Life Club at my high school this, um, this past year. I'm also Really for Life team captain for my high school, and I was um, able to help make that happen. I am also part of the Ford Dimension um, and Drew Mitchell's program. Thank you. Welcome. Are your parents here? <laughs> Councilmember Parlier. Thank you, Mayor. It's my pleasure to introduce Paula Rodriguez from Golden Valley High School. Paula? Good afternoon. My name is Paula Rodriguez. I go to Golden Valley High School. Uh, my college goal would be to go to UC Irvine to major in Spanish and have a minor in educational sciences in the hope of becoming a Spanish teacher. Um, my GPA is a 4.0 cumulative GPA and I just got today the Glendon Rogers Award. Uh, so my school activities are I'm senior class treasurer, honor society president, science bowl president, group leader for Interact, and I'm in We the People. Uh, my hobbies and interests include music. I did band for six years and astronomy. I really like science. And then uh, my community service, I am a volunteer at Adventist Health Bakersfield, which just got named uh, from San Joaquin Community Hospital, and I volunteer in the NICU. Thank you. Paula's parents aren't here, but thank you so much for your accomplishments. Welcome. <laughs> Outstanding. And we have one more assistant. City Manager, Mr. Telia. Thank you, Mayor Go, members of the council. It's my privilege to introduce to you Natalie Lovin, who is a senior at VHS, and she's gonna tell you a little bit about herself. Good evening, my name is Natalie Lovin. I am a senior at VHS. At school, I am this year's ASB president and um, one of the three school mascots, Dottie Triller. I am also a part of the French Honor Society, the choir program, and I am a link crew leader. I have a 4.3 GPA and I'm ranked number one of my class. Um, outside of school, I am a dancer. I dance for Civic Dance Center. I've been dancing for 12 years now. Um, I'm also a lead mentor for the Shine for Girls program and I am the student intern for our local nonprofit Kern Dance Alliance. I'm also a youth board member for the Relay for Life team. Um, my future goals, I hope to attend USC next year, specifically the Gloria Kaufman School of Dance. I would like to obtain my BFA in performance and choreography and one day become a professional dancer and choreographer. Yeah. Welcome. Three Trojans. Do you have uh, friends or family in the audience? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, what a fantastic group. I think we ought to take a picture, give them a round of applause. So let's see. 
and let's stand behind them. So, take the chair, and we'll stand behind, and then we'll get the gal because I'm going to kind of hold it up. So, so let's see. And two. Okay, I'm not right sure if we're going to. Oh, yeah, we totally are. Okay, on three. One, two, three. Do we? Have, okay, she's over there. On three. One, two, three. One more. Good. Thank you. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> and to stay up here for this next portion, at this time, Pastor Joseph at Jordan, Christ First Ministry, is going to offer the invocation. Pastor Jordan has been a leader in helping us with gang prevention. Years and years and years of dedicated service. I really appreciate that. And then, follow, Pastor, thank you so much. Following the invocation, Caden Perez and Melissa Fredrickson, sixth grade students from Caroline Harris Elementary School, will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Caden and Melissa are co-presidents of Harris Elementary. And in October, I had the pleasure of being there when their school was named Healthier U.S. Gold School by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Harris School received that Healthier U.S. School Challenge recognition for creating a healthy environment by promoting good nutrition, physical activity, and nutrition education. We're so proud that Harris is one of only two schools in California to receive the gold award. Their principal, Ms. Ann Lopez, is right here. Thank you so much for your leadership there. And congratulations to Kada, Kaden, Melissa, Principal Ann Lopez, and the Harris Hawks. And at this time, I'd ask you all to stand for the invocation, please, and then re remain standing for the pledge. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, we come before you with thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for all the many blessings that you've bestowed upon us, those that are seen as well as those that are unseen. Father God, we ask that you restore your blessings upon this city council, all our elected officials, and continuously bless the city of Bakersfield. Father God, as we say this prayer, we offer it all up to you in Jesus Christ's name. Thank God, and we all say it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. And now the pledge. Come forward. Uh, the flag salute. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. You may be seated. What wonderful young people we have. It's a joy to know that we're in good hands. I'm going to now turn this over to our um, new mayor. Here are a few guidelines to help our meeting run smoothly. We request that you turn off your phones. In keeping with council policy, council members aren't allowed to send or receive electronic communications during the meeting. Please be courteous in use of cameras and videos. Applause is allowed during presentations portion of the meeting, but isn't allowed at other times during the meeting. For safety reasons and as a courtesy to others, no signs are allowed in the council chambers. Thank you for your cooperation. Madam Clerk, please read the first item. Public comments. We have received five speaker cards this evening, two speakers regarding the same subject, and the remaining speakers about separate subjects. Thank you. At this time, we'll receive public statements. All statements are given a three-minute time limit, 15 minutes per topic. Speakers, if you're uh, out there, would you come forward so we can save some time? Just come where you can easily uh, get to the podium. If you have written comments that are longer than your verbal statement, please give those to the clerk. She'll give copies to the council. Please avoid any behavior that disrupts the meeting. And we're very interested and concerned with your issues. Due to the public notice requirement of the Brown Act, the council can't take action when an item isn't on the agenda. The council can, however, refer your matter to committee or request staff to contact you. If you're here to speak on hearing items 10A or B, now is not the time to speak. You'll be given an opportunity when those items are called later in the meeting. Madam Clerk, would you please call the first public speaker? 
Karen King regarding free rides for veterans. Welcome. Please introduce yourself and go ahead. Good evening, Mayor Go and members of the council. I'm Karen King. I'm the CEO of Golden Empire Transit District. And as you know, November 11th is Veterans Day. And I'm here this evening to let you know that GET is wanting to honor our veterans, not just on Veterans Day, but throughout the month of November. We will be offering free rides to all veterans and all active duty service members beginning today and, la and continuing through November 30th. If you have a military ID, you just need to show that to the driver and they will let you ride free. Uh, anywhere you need to go, as often as you want to go for the entire month. In addition, we want the community to know our pride in our service members, and we are putting a wrap on one of our buses uh, that thanks our military for their service. So look for that bus around town this month. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. King. Let's get the word out to our veterans. Madam Clerk, next speaker, please. Marvin Dean, regarding miscellaneous items. Welcome, please introduce yourself. Uh, good evening. Uh, I've got several items I'm going to speak on, and then I've got to leave. I've got to be Mr. Done. Dean, would you please say your name for oh, the record? Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Marvin Dean. I'm here to uh, speak on several items, and then I've got to rush off to be at LAX and catch a flight by 10 o'clock to go to Atlanta. Uh, last month or a couple months ago, a person came before this council uh, and spoke in my behalf because I was out of town and said that I had filed my 501 as an intent to run for the first Ward City Council. And I spoke to my councilman, Willie Earl, over there. And uh, we were going to do an exploratory committee and see what kind of support was out there. It's come back very supportive. So we filed our 110 and we're officially uh, will be a candidate. But I want to say this to the public and anybody to hear this. I think our councilman, Willie, has done a great job. My intent was to support him if he had ran again for re-election. I supported him the last time, and I intend to carry on in his uh, footsteps. And I'm going to speak about an issue that came before this council on marijuana and how I would have voted. And I said I'd come here and talk about it if I was, so people get an idea of what they would get if I'm at the honor to be elected, so people know where I stand ahead of time. But the three issues I wanted to talk about, four issues. One, I gave you guys a copy of a an event we're doing down in Fresno. Uh, as you guys know, I'm involved with the high-speed rail. We're going to do a reception. We're going to be recognizing people we call champion that have done great things for small business and DBEs and contracting opportunity. Uh, on that, the second item I wanted to speak to briefly was Team Bakersfield, led by uh, uh, Community Development Director Jackie, Public Works, and I thank the City Assistant Manager, and, Fred, and, and uh, on the 9th in Sacramento, they spoke about what we're doing here in Bakersfield before the high speed rail, and I'm very, very proud of that. Very, very proud. You guys did an excellent job. Excellent job. I'm very proud of that. I had to leave a little early. I couldn't tell you guys that. You did a hell of a job. Mr. Dean, you have uh, about a minute left. I see. I'm going to be very brief. The second thing I was going to speak on was the Cal Water uh, franchise. I was going to oppose that, but I talked to the Cal Water people, and I'm going to support the recommendation for the franchise. And my concern was, and I'm going to meet with them, that they need to do more with General Order 156 that regulate them with the PUC that said they have to contract with small business and, and disadvantaged businesses, and I think they need to do more. And the last item I'm going to speak on, I still got 30 seconds, Mayor, uh, is the marijuana issue that came before this, this board and the County Board of Supervisors. Had I been here, I'd have supported regulating marijuana. The underground economy is going to be there. We need to regulate it, control it, tax it, and I think we can uh, get better, uh, uh, better use of those facilities in terms of being law-abiding citizens. And then you're going to make citizens that need that for medical reasons to go underground and buy it. So where we can, we need to tax it. And I think the vote that the Willie took would have, uh, was the right vote. Thank you, and I'll see you all Thank at you. the next meeting. And Thank I made you, Mr. It Dean. Three seconds early. No, you're, that's over. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dean. Madam Clerk, next speaker, please. Sam Vagel regarding illegal street racing.
Good evening. Welcome. Please introduce yourself. If you would bear with me one moment. My name is Sam Vagel, and I'm a resident of Southwest Bakersfield. I'm here to address the illegal street racing that happens quite frequently at the Winco parking lot, Panama Lane and Ash Road. I understand this past Saturday, the local police were there making their presence known, and I commend them. On most Saturday nights, the racers meet there, and they refer to these as meets. Usually, it involves anywhere between 150 to 200 cars. I've been there. I saw it only because of the noise attracted me to see what is causing my inability to sleep. It usually goes on all the way till 3 a.m. It's very frequent that this happens. Now it's happening more than just Saturday nights. We're at like four nights a week. In the late evening hours, I've even seen them going in excess of 100 miles per hour. They usually travel up Panama Lane, Ash Road, Gosford, and District Boulevard. They usually post their meets in advance on social media, telling on yourself, right? Unfortunately, the California Vehicle Code is not enforceable on public property. However, there are some exceptions. I'm speaking from experience, okay? Referring to as I'm retired now. We'll leave that, leave it at that. Unfortunately, the street racers also know this, that the vehicle code is unenforceable on private property. There are some exceptions. Now, I think there's something that we need to look at. The city of Ontario, which is in San Bernardino County, they have had this problem for many years also. They adopted their own municipal codes. I provided a copy to each and every one of you. Those municipal codes have been tested in court, and the end result is they're still in place. I've spoke to Ontario Police Department, their representatives, and they were recommending that we apply for grant funding through the California Office of Traffic Safety. I know we already do this. There's a program called the STEP program, Select Selective Traffic Enforcement Program, but this is not enough. I spoke to Winco Management uh, at that location, and they're working on, their corporate office is working on remedying this problem. Thank you, Mr. Vigil. Your time is up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councilmember Parlier. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Sam, so much for your comments. Uh, I talked to Sam, uh, I guess it was earlier in the week. Uh, the police department did conduct an operation, and according to the press release, uh, two drivers were cited for reckless driving, six were cited for suspended driver's license, seven vehicles were impounded, 19 drivers were cited for other vehicle code violations. Um, Sam, I, I think you have some good ideas. We were talking about with Ontario. Um, if somebody from the police department could reach out to Mr. Vagel, and if there's any ideas that um, something we could do with our code, maybe even better, uh, bring please bring those to the city attorney, and maybe we'll circle back if we need to go legend lit for something. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Madam Clerk, next speaker, please. Cindy Everman regarding street racing. Good evening. Welcome. Please introduce yourself. You might want to pull down your mic. This. The one this to your one. right. Okay. Yes. My name is Cindy Everman, and I've been a resident of the Silver Creek area for 23 years. Tonight, I stand before you to express my concerns about a couple of issues that, in my opinion, has a negative impact on our neighborhood and its residents there. Recently, the local news station brought to surface a problem that we're having that Sam was discussing in the Winco parking lot. Customers complain that their safety has been compromised due to the congestion 
and because of the loitering that goes on in these areas making it difficult to shop or visit any of the stores in that area. Oftentimes parking entrances have been blocked, making it difficult to maneuver a car through the traffic to park and creates an unsafe situation for anyone wanting to walk into these stores. Not only has this become a safety issue, but also has become an annoyance to the surrounding neighborhoods that are forced to hear the loud humming noises coming from these vehicles and to inhale the smell of fumes created and it creates an unhealthy atmosphere. My second concern is one of more of a personal nature of growing traffic between Harris and Weibel traveling west towards Gosford in the backyards of residents there. While I recognize the fact that Bakersfield is a growing city, I feel that my once safe and peaceful neighborhood is paying the price for this growth and that consideration for the residents have been overlooked. With the addition of public transportation and large shopping locations, our streets are congested and filled with noise from loud street bikes and speeding auto autos that exhibit no respect to residential speed limits or posted stop signs. There are parks and public schools in this area and the safety for families and small children are threatened daily. It is my opinion that the residents in Silver Creek area are paying the price for the city growth and the lack of concern for the residents has been ignored. The noise of speeding autos and bikes has escalated to an annoying daily and nightly occurrence. It is not unusual to be awakened up any night of the week to the sound of individuals doing donuts and racing down Harris at very fast and dangerous speeds. It is my hope that by addressing these concerns before you tonight, that you will be able to adopt new municipal codes that allow enforcement on private com commercial property and our residential area. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you, Ms. Zipperman. Councilmember Parlier. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, again, with the police department, if you can continue efforts in that Winco area and along with Harris too, if we can do some traffic enforcement efforts in that area, I'd sure appreciate it. And Nick, if Public Works can take a look with uh, Harris and see if we can do anything to mitigate what she's talking about also. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Terry Maxwell regarding fair balance. Good evening. Please introduce yourself. Thank you, Mariko. My name is Terry Maxwell. and. Uh, I want to talk about fair balance tonight. Uh, as I watched the uh, budget presentation that you were given at your last meeting, um, I really questioned a lot of things of, that were being put in front of you. And it seems to me that if Mr. Hewitt gets to spend almost a half hour uh, letting you know all of the things that the staff has put together, uh, if anybody has a question about it or anybody would like to rebut to that, there basically is no forum other than spending three minutes in front of you like I'm spending right now. Um, I would like to see this council take the bull by the horns and on, on based on fair balance that you allow if the staff or if you're given a presentation, a workshop, um, a discussion that at the next meeting if somebody in the public does want to rebut some of the things that were said that they do not have just a three minute uh, limit that they're able to cover the subject thoroughly. At the present time, this council is being given one side of the story. And I think it's important for the public as well as for the council to hear somebody else. When I sat there and watched um, the population growth of Bakersfield over the last 10 years being 15%, did any of you equate that to only being a 1.4% increase in population over a 10 year period? That's the per annum. In order to attain the, the population forecast for 2040 and 2045, you now have to grow at a minimum of 5%. And if you, if you look at some of the statistics, especially in the EIR for the Centennial Corridor, you have to grow at 7.5% at this point to attain those numbers. Now, I need more than three minutes to go over some of those things. I could have questioned a lot of the things around just about any slide that Mr. Hewitt put up in front of you. And I think it's fair balance. So 
I'd like to see someone put a resolution or an ordinance or some change to the way that you conduct your meetings so that when the staff does do a presentation that someone from the public, if they desire to give a rebuttal to that, has the opportunity to stand in front of everybody, this council as well as the public on, on KGov, and deliver to them how they view things so that you can have that as, as a counterbalance to the, to the one-sided uh, dialogue that you're getting at the present time. I also think that uh, there are times when the staff is um, represented in the newspaper and they say something that, again, at a, at a forum like this, it's not a great forum for a rebut on things like 24th Street having three times as much uh, traffic accidents as a similar street. I, I'd like to see the proof on that because it doesn't exist. In the EIR for 24th Street, it was stated that the 24th Street area you're talking about has substantially less accidents than normal. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Maxwell. Council Member Rivera. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, along the lines of, of, uh, of the comment we just heard, I'd like to refer an item to budget and finance, um, kind of specific, more related to a, this idea of participatory, uh, to a participatory budget process, which I've seen done uh, in cities like Fresno, San Jose, Oakland, and elsewhere, uh, not just in California, but across the country, um, that really gives you know, the public a, uh, an even greater opportunity um, um, to kind of tell us what priorities they want us to focus on and, and, uh, and incorporate that into our budget process. So if we could add that to a future agenda item, uh, I can talk to staff a little bit more about it, but it's being done elsewhere and I think it'd be a, a welcomed addition to Bakersfield. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, if our uh, student elected officials, uh, future elected officials would like to join us in the audience, that would be a, a good time to make this transition. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. And thank you again. If you would like, uh, I know some of you have homework, which you need to do in order to earn your uh, 4.5 GPA. So. Uh, speaker who didn't turn in his card. Uh, Sorry about that. Would you give that to uh, the city attorney, please? I mean, to the city clerk, please. Madam Clerk, would you please announce the public speaker? David Brust regarding marijuana. Welcome. Please introduce yourself. Thank you. My name is David Brust. I'm the uh, co-founder of BRAPS, Bakersfield Residents Against Pot Shops. We'd like to applaud the city's latest crackdown on pot shops in the city of Bakersfield. Thank uh, Police Chief Lau Martin, City Attorney Ginny Gennaro, Assistant City Attorney Richard Iger, City Manager Alan Tandy, Code Enforcement, and the majority of the city council that understands the scourge illegal pot shops have had on our community. For the last five years, we have witnessed the growth of these illegal pot shops, the associated crime and a lack of leadership in our two poorest wards. We pleaded with our past city councilmen to simply enforce the law or adopt a new ordinance to give the city the needed teeth behind enforcement to no avail. Some on this very board were simply happy to throw up their hands and a blind eye to the murders kidnappings, armed robberies, illegal drug sales, and street shootouts plaguing our community. The eight, then, eight months ago, City of Bakersfield passed a new ordinance holding landlords responsible for renting 
to these illegal pot shops and enforcement became a priority. Through the hard work of the city, we have closed more pot shops in eight months than we had the previous four years. Landlords are evicting their tenants and we are beginning to see a difference in Olander, but it's not over yet. We need more enforcement. A year and a half ago, BRAPS issued complaints on 16 shops that then grew to 21 before the city began enforcement. Now we only have four left. Some on this board believe the current cost of enforcement is too high. And to them I say, what is the cost of a person's life? Is it $30,000, $48,000, $72,000? How about the cost of addiction treatment for our youth? Petty thefts, home burglaries, homelessness, and the pain and suffering of families ravaged by the crimes caused in part by marijuana addiction. It's easy to turn a blind eye and say, let's just regulate what to this point is a criminal endeavor because it will make us tax revenue. And to that I say, what would that make the city council? Partners with drug dealers? No, what we need is to continue to put the hammer down on these shops and drive them out of our neighborhoods. There may be a time and place in the future to regulate, but this isn't it. The state has yet to pass any regulations. They haven't even promised to establish an enforcement office in Bakersfield like ABZ has, or even tell us our share of tax revenue from the state. To regulate now would be a huge mistake. It's naive to sit on the dais and vociferate about regulation when you have literally no idea what effect it will have on our community. Nearly every city in Kern County and the county has voted for a ban. The wise and prudent way to proceed is to actively enforce our current law, get rid of these illegal shops, let them know we are a law and order city, and wait till the issues of regulation and crime gets worked out in other cities. A city councilman and woman, your number one job is public safety, and allowing these illegal shops and associated crime to continue to exist is not living up to that priority. I have here two documents for you up. to review. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to just give a couple documents for you guys. One is from the district attorney from Denver, the Denver DA, and another one is from our mission down here talking about the growing homelessness that has faced Denver. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead and give those to the city clerk, please. Thank you. Council Member Rivera. Thank you, Mayor. I'm not sure if you have a pen handy or not, but 661-477-0401 is my number. And since I got elected in 2013, I've received zero calls from you on this particular issue. So I can only assume you were referring to me in some of your comments there. Um, I think I've clearly articulated uh, why I feel the way I do. Um, and uh, you know, obviously disagree with the city's approach, but encourage the dialogue. Just encourage you to actually pick up the phone and call. Next item, please. Under workshops, we have item A, Mesa Marin Sports Complex Naming Rights, item one, presentation, and item two, an agreement. Thank you. Ms. Hoover. Honorable Mayor, members of City Council, it is my privilege to be here today to acknowledge Tarina Holmes for answering the call for naming rights at Mesa Marin. This softball complex at Mesa Marin hosts over 175,000 participants annually in leagues and tournaments. It's located at Highway 78 and Bedford Green, and it is uniquely located in a growing part of Bakersfield. Mesa Marin is a master plan sports complex being built in phases. The next phase includes playgrounds, a spray ground, walking paths, and picnic shelters to open this coming spring. A dog park has already opened there as well. Future phases will include four more softball fields, soccer fields, multi-purpose fields, and more picnic and walking areas and an entrance off of 184, so it runs between 178 and 184. Tarina Homes Incorporated is a Bakersfield-based home building company with an interest in quality of life for residents throughout Bakersfield. A new home development known as Shamrock Hills is starting construction across the road from Mesa Marin on Bedford Green. It is my honor to introduce Several representatives from Tarina Homes tonight, James McKay, Edith Gibson, 
Matthew Roberts, Joel Ramirez. If they could come forward, and Mayor Go and Council Member Weir, if you could also come forward, they have a presentation to make to you. Hi, my name is James McKay, uh, for those of you who do not know me. Um, Torino Homes is a locally owned company. Uh, we build homes here in Kern County. <coughs> uh, Shamrock Hills is one of our communities here in Bakersfield, and it's situated between uh, two new schools and the great uh, May Sprint Sports Complex. Uh, Torino Homes is focused on greeting, building green um, and creating healthy and physical environment for the community. Um, by donating the money to the Parks Department, we hope to improve the health and well-being of the community and the future buyers of our homes. We're happy to be part of um, this Mesa Marin Sports Complex and, uh, and building the park and not just our, our homes in the community. That amount is hard to read. Can that be read for us? It's a check to the city of Bakersfield for $200,000. The basic terms of the agreement are for three years, starting January 1st, 2018, for $200,000, as you saw. And the funds are to be used for future construction at Mace Marin uh, Complex. The name of the complex will be known as Torina Home Sports Complex at Mace Marin. And if we could have a vote, or? Councilmember Weir? I would be happy to do that. You know, the first one's always the hardest. And I'd like to thank Tarina Holmes for coming up, stepping up, doing a great thing for that park, and doing a great thing for Northeast Bakersfield. And I am pleased to move um, approval of the agreement. Thank you so much. You have a motion. Please cast your votes. Motion is unanimously approved. Thank you very much, Torina Holmes. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Consent calendar items 8A through 8U for approval. A staff memorandum was received regarding item 8A, transmitting a corrected document. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I would make a motion to approve consent calendar items 8A through 8U with the corrections to 8A in the memo. You have a motion. Please cast your votes. <coughs> motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. Next item, please. Under hearings. Before I open the public hearings, I'll go over the presentation time policy. Each side will be allowed 15 minutes. It's 15 minutes for all speakers, so it's important that you identify yourself, make your statement quickly so others may speak. We'll hear statements from those opposed to the staff recommendation, then we'll hear from those who'd like to speak in favor of staff's recommendation. If there's testimonies on both sides, each side will be allowed a five-minute rebuttal. There's a clock on the wall behind me which indicates 15 minutes. Please step to the microphone and identify yourself. After 14 minutes, a yellow light will come on. 
At the end of 15 minutes, a red light will flash, indicating your time is up. Quickly end your statement at that time. You may ask questions during your statement, but they won't be answered until the public hearing is closed. If you have written comments that are longer than your verbal statement, please give those to the clerk and she'll provide copies to the council. Please be courteous to others who wish to speak. Unless there's approval by the majority of the city council, there's a strict 15 minute time limit for all those in favor or in opposition to staff's recommendation. So please be concise, avoid repeating the remarks of previous speakers. And council members, if you need to step out at all during the hearing, if you'd let me know and I'll put a little stop during that time. Madam Clerk, please read the first public hearing item. Public hearing on resolution of necessity to determine the public interest and necessity for acquisition of certain real property by eminent domain for the street improvement north of Brundage Lane and west of Union Avenue, phase 1B and 5. Mr. Fiddler. Honorable Mayor and Council Members, um, over the past several years, the city has been constructing storm drain collection system improvements in older parts of the downtown area. As part of the system, we, we install new curbs, gutters, storm drain collection uh, system, underground storm drain collection system. For the, now we're reaching a point where we're exceeding the design capacity of the existing system. So in order for us to continue with the installation of new curbs, gutters, and sidewalks, we need to construct additional retention basin systems within this area. Um, as uh, the city council is being asked to adopt a resolution of necessity to acquire in fee approximately 41,960 square feet of a larger parcel of vacant land located at 141 First Street. Uh, by eminent domain for the construction of a retention basin as part of the street improvements for north of Brundage Lane and west of Union Avenue. This area we've been constructing uh, curbs, gutters, and sidewalks and storm grain collection system for the past two to three years. <clears throat> Should the council approve the resolution of necessity, city staff and the city attorney will in initiate court proceedings to acquire the property as well as seek pre-judgment possession of the property as necessary. Throughout the process, city staff will continue to work with the property owner to attempt to negotiate and finalize an agreement reflecting fair and uh, equitable compensation in the property. Staff recommends approve adoption of the resolution of necessity. Thank you, Mr. Fiddler. At this time, I'll open the public hearing. How many people would like to speak in opposition to staff's recommendation? Would you just raise your hands, please? Seeing none, how many people would like to speak in support of staff's recommendation? Your hands. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and return it to council for comment and action. Vice Mayor? I would move adoption of the resolution of necessity. You have a motion? Please cast your votes. Motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. Next item, please. Item B, public hearing to consider first reading of an ordinance granting a franchise to California Water Service Company. Mr. Telia. I can bring up the presentation there, Julie. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Go, members of the council. Uh, Steve Tellio with the city manager's office. I am here tonight to provide you an introduction into uh, this, this item, which is a public hearing to discuss the approval of a Cal Water uh, franchise. Uh, I'm just gonna go through some slides and I'll try to be brief, but try to cover the information relevant to, to this item. Cal Water um, has a franchise currently with the city of Bakersfield that allows Cal Water to distribute uh, water within their service territory. And I'm gonna show a map uh, here in a minute that covers that area of town. And it's important to remember that as I'm talking about this franchise, it does uh, refer only to the area of town um, that is serviced and uh, operated, or that is serviced by Cal Water uh, in which they operate their own utility. Uh, the franchise provides Cal Water with the right to use the city's right of way. In exchange for that, they pay a franchise fee to the city uh, for, for that use. Um, 
The city's franchise agreement with Cal Water does not provide the city with any authority or oversight over Cal Water's uh, rate making process. They're a regulated utility and that process is uh, governed by the California Public Utilities Commission. And so just to sort of uh, orient you with where we're talking about, the dark green area on this map is the, is the area in question. This is the area that is uh, uh, served by Cal Water and is uh, related to the franchise um, agreement that we're talking about this evening. And just sort of a different perspective of the same map, uh, we sort of overlaid the Cal Water service area with the various council wards. I think um, just given the, the way that Cal Water's system is constructed, they have uh, a little bit of almost every ward um, with the exception of Ward 5. I think Ward 5 is the only ward that does not have any uh, Cal Water territory in it. So the current Cal Water franchise, which was uh, approved in 2015, is set to expire uh, shortly here in December of this year. Um, there's a specific process that is utilized to approve any sort of franchise agreement with uh, a utility, and that includes the utility submitting an application to the city requesting a new franchise, and that has, that has been accomplished. Um, on October 11th, uh, at our last council meeting, the council initiated the, the formal steps in this process uh, by approving the acceptance of the application and then secondarily approving a resolution of intention to grant the franchise and also set a public hearing on the matter which is taking place tonight. Uh, since this process began, staff has worked with Cal Water to uh, review the, the franchise document that was uh, approved a couple years ago to identify any areas of change or modification that are needed. We've done that process uh, and then there's really two areas that have been adjusted from the um, the franchise that was uh, approved two years ago. The first is related to the term. Uh, as I noted before, we had a very short term um, associated with the last approval. Typically, these franchises can run anywhere from a couple years as we've had uh, to more commonly 50 year franchises, 25, uh, could even be indeterminate as we have with some of our other utilities. Um, in this process, what we're proposing and what Cal Water has agreed to, and I think meets some of the desire of, of the council that has been expressed in the past, is we're having an initial five-year term period for the franchise, which, is, um, which also includes several uh, five-year extension periods, assuming that in any one of those terms, the, uh, the council does not uh, take action to uh, decide to renegotiate the terms of the agreement. So in total, it, would, it could be a 25-year franchise, but it's broken up into five-year increments. Uh, the second sort of area that was uh, modified, uh, a couple years ago at the request of the council, we put in some provisions that required Cal Water to come before the council uh, at times and provide information related to uh, their utility, to their rates. Um, they also are required to provide the city with notice any time that they're applying to the California Public Utilities Commission for some sort of rate adjustment. Uh, so what this um, section does is it really sort of more, more formalizes um, the process that was uh, put in place two years ago but that has evolved. Um, really what it does, it kind of has three components. The first component is it would require Cal Water no less than annually to come before the council and just generally provide an update to the council about the operations of their system. Um, and also in the cases where they are going through a general rate case cycle, they would provide information to the council via that forum. In addition, they have an obligation to provide the city clerk and the city manager's office with uh, information related to any sort of advice letter or application that they may submit to the PUC that might have an effect on the ultimate rates that are paid by ratepayers in the Bakersfield district. And then the third component is, uh, depending upon any one of the, receiving any one of those notices, if the council has a desire to bring Cal Water in to provide additional detail or information about any one of those filings, uh, we have the ability to do that um, once a filing has been submitted to the PUC. So just a little bit about the uh, timeline associated with this process. Um, as I mentioned, uh, there's an advice letter, uh, or I'm sorry, there's an uh, application which has uh, already been submitted. We approved the resolution of uh, intention and, uh, and accepted the application at the last meeting. Tonight we're having the, um, or we provided public notice after the last meeting that this hearing would be taking place. And tonight we're holding the public hearing to allow the public to, to comment on this item. Um, 
following the public comment, we'd recommend uh, approval of the first reading of the ordinance uh, with the follow-up of the second reading on the uh, November 15th agenda. And then the franchise, assuming that approval would go into effect 30 days later or approximately December 15th of this year. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions the council may have or otherwise stand by um, following any comments from the public. Thank you, Mr. Telia. At this time, I'll open the public hearing. How many people would like to speak in opposition to staff's recommendation? Seeing none, is there anyone who would like to speak in favor of staff's recommendation? If so, please come forward. This is in favor. Please introduce yeah. yourself. Um. Mayor and members of the council, I've sent you a letter regarding this. Quite often, Cal Warner has been blamed for raising their rates and then all this sort of stuff. But there's a negative externality which you might want to figure out and to mitigate. And that is what's going to happen when there's 30 billion with a B that will have to be paid for by the property owners in this area. And as more cities and counties pull out, and they decide they don't want to pay 30 billion for nothing, then that means we will pay more. And this has been set up, we pay three times for the water that's imported here. And uh, it doesn't help the people that originally set up for they have gotten into a frame of reference of water fare. And now that's going to people who are going to benefit will be in Beverly Hills. And I really feel sorry for the people in Beverly Hills. And um, but what we need to do is think about what's going to happen then. They will be out here blaming cow water, blaming the city for the rates increase. So the 30 billion is going to be paid for off your taxes, and it's going to be paid off for um, your rates. So it's something to look forward to. One thing that might make about mitigating is one of these new things they thought up called a contract. And the city may want a contract for their water rather than the blank check that's being given currently. Thank you. Thank you. Is there someone else who'd like to speak in support of staff's recommendation? Please come forward and introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Greg Milliman. I'm with California Water Service Company. I won't take much of your time. I just wanted to say that Cal Water is in support of this agreement. We worked with staff to come up with terms that we thought were really um, fair and, and appropriate for the city of Bakersfield, and that is to have the opportunity to come before you once a year and and give you the state of the district to keep you up to date on how things are going. So just wanted to say we, we appreciate the effort of Mr. Tellia and as the rest of the staff and, and you to uh, come to a mutually agreeable term. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Milliman. Anyone else who'd like to speak in support of staff's recommendation? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and return it now to Council for Comment and Action. Vice Mayor. Is there a motion on this? First, I'd make a motion for first reading on this ordinance. You have a motion. Please cast your vote. <laughs> motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. Next item, please. Under new business, item A, a resolution setting the dates of the regular city council meetings budget hearings, and department budget presentations for ca uh, calendar year 2018. Thank you, Mr. Telia. Thank you, Mayor Go, members of the council. Um, it's that time of year again where we look towards uh, the new year that's uh, coming down, uh, down the pipe, and, and we have provided uh, a calendar for your consideration that would set uh, the dates for all of our meetings and budget meetings. Um, I, I believe the clerk's office has taken great care to sort of mimic what we did this year and also uh, account for any sort of um, 
known potential conflicts such as League of California Cities conferences and, and things of that nature. So um, we've provided the, uh, the draft calendar to you in, in your packet and uh, I would uh, turn it to you for, over to you for consideration and if there's any comments or, or potential changes, otherwise we'd look for a motion to approve. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Seeing no comments, I would move to approve the calendar submitted by staff. You have a motion. Please cast your votes. Motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. Next item, please. Council and Mayor statements. Councilmember Rivera. Thank you, Mayor. I'll be brief. Um, I uh, sit on the Current Energy Foundation, and there is a a second biannual event happening uh, November 11th, Saturday, November 11th, at the Kern County Museum, known as the Kern Energy Festival, um, and it's a it's a it's a fun event for kids, for families, for adults, for anyone really interested in uh, learning more about the uh, diversity of Kern County's homegrown advantages. I think we have in oil and gas, and wind, and solar, and so many other things, um, and it's free to the public. So it's 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. I uh, know uh, November 11, 2017, there'll be educational exhibits, there'll be food, there'll be uh, music, uh, and all sorts of other things. I encourage folks uh, to comment out and join us. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? We had the privilege recently of hosting our sister city from Bouchon. Thank you, Vice Mayor, for your... Uh, thank you, Council Member Weir, for your leadership in... Uh, having such a wonderful celebration. We just heard very positive comments and uh, it was a very warm and welcoming celebration. We also recently had uh, San John de Luz, the vice mayor from there and a delegation and that was wonderful. Thank you also city staff for all of your help in welcoming our friends and we're exploring this relationship now with our friends in France and thank you all for your support. Thank you for being here. Do we have some students here? It looks like uh, we have some students, potentially Bakersfield College. Welcome, Renegades, Cal State, CSUB. Welcome. Hope you enjoyed the meeting and learned a lot. And uh, we look forward to your continual engagement in the civic project process. If there is nothing further at this time, we stand adjourned at 623 in time for the Dodger game. The 3.30 p.m. meeting of the Bakersfield City Council is now in session. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to call to order the 3.30 City Council meeting of November 1st, 2017. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. 
Mayor Go. Here. Vice Mayor Smith. I am here. Council Member Rivera. Go Dodgers. <laughs> Council Member Gonzalez. Council Member Weir. Here. Council Member Freeman. Here. Council Member Sullivan. And Council Member Parlier. Here. To comply with the Brown Act, we'll receive public statements now. Please limit your comments to the workshop and closed session items only. All statements are given a three minute time limit, 15 minutes per subject. Are there any public statements? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, next item please. Under workshops, we have the Kern Region Active Transportation Plan. Thank you, Mr. Fiddler. Good afternoon, Honorable Mayor and Council Members. Uh, tonight, Kern, Cog of, uh, Kern Council of Governments, in partnership with several other jurisdictions in the county, including the City of Bakersfield, uh, worked to develop the Kern Regional Active Transportation Plan. The purpose of the plan is to promote walkable and bicycle-friendly um, environments. Kern Council of Governments contracted with Alta Design Plus Planning, or Alta Planning Plus Design to prepare the document and the plan. And tonight, uh, Roy Renfro with Alta Planning and Des Plus Design will be presenting to you. At this time, I'll turn it over to Roy. All right, thank you. I'll keep, try to keep my remarks quick, because I know there's a certain um, sporting event in about two hours that we'd like to get to. So thanks again. Again, my name is Rory Renfro with Alta Planning, and we've had the pleasure to work with uh, Kern Cog, Kern Council of Governments, County of Kern, uh, City of Bakersfield, and other regional partners on a, a regional active transportation plan for the Kern County area. And uh, just kind of stepping back and thinking about the bigger picture of why we're doing this plan, really walking and bicycling are fundamental transportation modes, and they serve so many purposes beyond getting from A to B. They can really foster healthy communities. They can stir, spur economic development and just serve as easy and, and uh, comfortable ways to get from uh, access to school, access to transit, and other community destinations. So that's really what we're keeping in mind, the, the bigger picture in terms of di diversifying our transportation portfolio and providing more uh, personal choices for your constituents. Whoops, I am right clicking, here we go. So the goals of the plan are really, they encompass a lot of different areas ranging from safety and connectivity to healthy communities, providing an equitable transportation system for your residents. Um, it also includes the nuts and bolts in terms of uh, ranging from the high level policy guidance right down to projects and an implementation framework as you as a city embark on your implementation efforts in the years to come. Um, we're really trying to plan for a broad variety of users. I think back in the day when we planned for the bicycle uh, transportation mode, we often were planning for the folks in the upper right hand of the picture, the strong and fearless riders who felt comfortable biking down just any type of road, whether it's a residential street or highway. Uh, but we know that there is a wide, uh, uh, broader constituency out there, a lot of interested but concerned folks who would like to give bicycling or try to do it more often, but they have concerns about safety and comfort, and would we want our kids to be out they're using the system. So we're really trying to think about the all ages and abilities, the ages 8 to 80, if you will, in terms of uh, answering the question, uh, for whom are we planning? And the same really is true for the pedestrian realm. Most of us probably today are, are able-bodied, able to, able to walk around pretty darn easily, but it's, it's going to happen that at some point in our lives, whether it's a, on a temporary basis or permanent, we're all going to experience a, a disability at some point in our lives, whether it's an injury or through age or something else. And so it's important for us to be thinking about the wide range of needs uh, in the walking realm. They are very quite ranging. It's our job um, as the project team uh, working with you as a city to, to be thinking about that broader audience as well. So um, as you know, Kern County is quite large and uh, the COG um, understandably is unable to unearth every square inch of the uh, entire region and so their approach was to select roughly two dozen focus area communities that exhibit characteristics that can be found throughout the county ranging from small resort communities down to a big area like metropolitan Bakersfield that has urban and suburban characteristics down to rural, smaller and rural uh, agricultural communities. So again, trying to hit on the white swath of communities throughout the region. 
So the active transportation plan, um, just moving from beginning to finish, it includes a pretty solid assessment of existing conditions, basically what's out there today, what's working well, and where are there opportunities for improvements. And from that, that's the springboard to developing a suite of projects and programs that you as the city and your uh, regional partners uh, can move forward in the years to come to improve uh, conditions for people walking and bicycling and accessing transit. But also equally important is an implementation framework to help you answer the question of where where do we start first? Where do we um, focus our investments in year number one, year number two, and so on over the next couple of decades? So this project has been going on for about a year and a half. We started uh, last summer. And uh, we've been checking in with the community at various points along the way uh, to make sure that the information that we're looking at actually matches conditions on the ground. So there's a lot of data that we looked at, but also got out there on, our, on foot and on bicycles, go figure, uh, to get a sense of how the system is functioning uh, today and what are the opportunities in the future. And we're kind of at the final stages at this point where we're going out, speaking with um, governing bodies like yourself and Kern Cog, uh, County of Kern, and, and the incorporated cities as other incorporated cities and then in the next month or so um, probably right after New Year's we'll be doing just kind of final cl cleanup and touch-ups on the plan so that you'll have a plan that you can take forward and start pursuing uh, Caltrans active transportation program grants and other sort of uh, funding sources to put the plan into action so I won't go through all these, but the plan is pretty, if you were to print out the plan, it's pretty darn large, but it's got a pretty comprehensive inventory, if you will, of uh, wh wh where are the current sidewalks and bicycle facilities and paths, the land use composition, where are the collisions happening, where's the risk ex exposure to people walking and bicycling. Um, we did a thorough review of uh, a lot of great planning work and design work that's been done in the past and, cur and currently underway that really relates to this. So ranging from all of the transit development plans, we've got high-speed rail coming in, the Making Downtown Bakersfield Project, your community is doing so many great things that actually directly relate to this plan. So we kind of felt like that foundation has been built and so this is kind of the house that we're building on it to kind of pull it all together in terms of making walking and bicycling better for your, for your residents. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, nothing beats, it's one thing to stare at a computer and look at maps all day, but nothing beats getting out there and using the system and experiencing it firsthand. And we made an effort, actually, we did this in August. <laughs> um, it was quite warm, but nonetheless, we spent a couple of weeks in each of the communities walking and bicycling to get a sense of how things are working today. And on the walking realm, the, the types of uh, infrastructure that out there range, it ranges widely from formalized sidewalks and crossings to uh, less formal uh, areas where people are just walking on the roadways because that's really, um, that's all there is <laughs> to walk in in a sense. So uh, a diverse, a wide diversity in terms of uh, infrastructure that's out there on the ground today. And the same is true in the bicycling realm. Bakersfield, uh, not surprisingly, has a more developed bicycle network than say some of the smaller communities out there. So you guys have a great head start and there's a lot of wonderful opportunities to, to leverage that momentum that you have put into place and work toward the future. But also equally important to getting out there ourselves is talking with the true experts, which are uh, the residents of Bakersfield and throughout Kern County. These are the folks, yourselves included, who use the system on a daily basis and can tell us all the little fine-grained details about your experiences out there using the system and your kids or your friends and family as well. We did a number of walk audits in partnership with Cal California Walks. Uh, we also held a number of uh, standalone workshops uh, at the end of last year, the beginning of the project. And then in uh, June, we did the farmer's market circuit, essentially all around Kern County to present draft recommendations. And that was a lot of fun because it gave us an opportunity to actually go to the people and not ask the, for them to come to us because we know everybody's busy. We've, we've got jobs, we've got kids, we've got family, all these obligations. So going to the people was a great way to uh, garner some feedback as well. We also had a project website that's been uh, going on throughout the duration of the project. And we also included um, a user survey that people could fill out toward the beginning of the project to help us get a steer in terms of, again, what is the, how does the walking and bicycling system function for you today as a resident of Bakersfield and beyond. 
So the recommendations in the plan, they span kind of a broad variety of areas ranging from higher level policy recommendations and goals down to corridor and intersection specific uh, recommendations. But also beyond the stuff that you can build, um, the plan also includes a suite of programs and um, guidance with regard to maintenance and operations, uh, and also includes a section on potential funding sources because that's just as important in, in terms of what we recommend, but how are we gonna do it, right? Uh, and here's just an example of what some of the maps look like on the pedestrian realm. So each, each community has a map showing the recommended improvements, but just as important, it includes the, the details, the project list uh, that you can migrate to um, further design and eventually into your capital improvement programs. So it, include thing, it includes things like, what is it we actually want to build out there? Is it a sidewalk or a path? What's it, what do we think it's going to cost? And who might be the uh, leading jurisdictions that would be charged with uh, implement, implementing that type of project? And the same is true on the bicycle network side. Um, in developing the bicycle network, we had to take a lot of things into consideration, um, particularly the, the characteristics of the streets that we're looking at. So things like how many cars are traveling on the, on the road each day? How fast are they going? Uh, how wide is the road? Is there available to space to do something in there? Um, a lot of things that go into um, the decision-making process in terms of assigning a particular bicycle facility type, whether it's a bicycle lane or it's a shared roadway or something like that. Again, with the goal of appealing to a much broader audience um, in terms of increasing ridership and improving safety and comfort for your residents. We also know that people walking and bicycling and riding the bus or whatever, we do not stop the trip right at the city limits. Um, and so knowing, just the, knowing that, the, um, that regional uh, connections are critically important, we actually had a, some legwork on this uh, through the 2012 Kern County Bicycle Plan, which looked at the entirety of the county and all those kind of intercity connections. So we wove those into this plan as well uh, to address some of those longer term or those longer uh, intercity uh, active transportation connection needs. And lest we forget the importance of what we call end of trip facilities. So is there a place for you to park your bike at the end of the trip, whether it's a school at a transit stop at City Hall here or a park or something like that? Um, is there transit stop infrastructure like shelters and posted maps and things like that that can be really critically important in informing the decision on whether to make uh, a trip via walking on a bike or in some other, uh, other means. But also, um, we know that it's great to cut ribbons on projects, and that's what gets all the love and the attention. But equally important is just making sure that our transportation system is in good working order. So the you know state of good repair um, term has been thrown around a lot, a lot recently, and it's just as critical for active transportation facilities as it is for our freeways and our transit corridors, et cetera. And so this plan includes some uh, guidance drawing from best practices in terms of how we can keep our, transp our active transportation uh, system in good working order. Um, but this plan also recommends a number of other things beyond just stuff that we can build and we know that communities can derive a much bigger return on your investment if you augment those uh, infrastructure investments with the programmatic elements that, one, get people to know that the, the system exists and where to go use it and things like that. So we like, um, you know, people like to say, if you build it, they will come. But at Alta, we like to say that um, if you build it, tell people about it, get them excited about it, they will come in droves. It's kind of our new cliche term. Anyway, I'll throw it out here. But nonetheless, this has a lot of potential to add value to the infrastructure investments that you make as a community. But at the end of the day, um, like most long range transportation plans, we have a pretty darn ambitious project list. Uh, but we know that we can't implement everything at once. So we, again, need to answer the question of where do we start? Where do we start um, implementing our big aspirational plan? And so our project team, uh, in consultation with our project steering committee, which uh, the city of Bakersfield had some representation on, including many other stakeholders, we de developed a set of um, criteria here to, for which each project was compared to give us a sense of how well does a project stack up against another project under, uh, with these um, elements in mind. So from that it, um, emerged, the long list is kind of uh, prioritized, if you will. So it gives you a sense of like, here are the projects that we might want to start in the next uh, one, two, three, 10 years um, as we start putting the plan into action. 
But if there's any part of an active transportation plan that should be uh, fluid, if you will, or dynamic or open to flexibility, it really is the implementation framework because so many things can change over time and we may not know what's going to happen in the year what's 20 years from now 2037 so we may not know what the community composition is going to be so um, these are just a couple of you know many things can happen so really as a city it's uh, great for you to be opportunistic to um, leverage um, opportunities as they as they come up even if for example a project was way down at the bottom of the list uh, but be opportunistic say for example you were going out and repaving a corridor or re completely rebuilding a street and bringing it up to your city standards maybe that's the time to get the uh, uh, the complete street treatments and the bikeway and the walkway facilities in. So uh, that's just one thing that we really like to encourage communities to do is to be sure to stay familiar with the implementation framework and be open to change um, as time progresses. Um, that is basically a summation of a year and a half has a year and a half's worth of work. Um, we'd be happy to entertain any questions or comments, and otherwise, just want to thank you for your time this afternoon. Thanks, Councilmember Smith. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Roy, for the presentation. And this is very important to me and dear to my heart. And it's an important quality of life amenity for the city. You know, we we seen last time at our last city council meeting the importance of uh, pedestrian access for the neighborhood. And um, it's been about five years since we adopted our bicycle transportation plan. So I think it's great that we revisit and we're adding the pedestrian portion that was not in the first one. And uh, appreciate your work and thank look you. forward to implementation. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we need a motion now from Vice Mayor. Receive and file. Make a motion to receive and file. You have a motion. Please cast your votes. Motion is unanimously approved. Thank you very much for your presentation. We appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Go Dodgers. Look what you started, uh, Councilmember Rivera. Next item, please. Under close, oh, item B, bicycle and pedestrian safety report. Mr. Gary. Good timing. That it is. Good afternoon, Honorable Mayor and uh, City Council members. I'm Assistant to the City Manager, Chris Gary. And, um, Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, the agenda item before you uh, this afternoon is a response to a previous referral from Vice Mayor Smith uh, to examine ways to increase bicyclists and pedestrian safety. So today's presentation summarizes the recent fatality history of pedestrians and bicyclists in, in Bakersfield, uh, reviews recent and upcoming projects and activities, and explores ways to increase safety. And since this topic involves multiple departments, city staff from Recreation and Parks, Public Works, and Police, are available and answer to questions as well. In addition to a council referral, this discussion was also uh, initiated following a report released by a nonprofit organization that examined bicyclists and pedestrian fatalities within metropolitan areas. So as a result, city staff began by reviewing fatalities just within uh, Bakersfield city limits at the beginning of calendar year 2014 uh, until present. During this time period, there have been a total of 64 uh, fatalities, which bifurcates into 55 pedestrians and nine bicyclists. Uh, the chart on the top right-hand side displays a breakdown of these fatalities, where you can see that there's an upward trend year over year specifically for, uh, for pedestrians. Next, city staff found that 73% of pedestrians and 56% uh, of bicyclists were deemed the party at fault. And uh, this determination is made following uh, uh, an investigation by the police department. We also examined the primary factors uh, related to each fatality. And this was achieved by reviewing the frequency of the California vehicle code violations associated with each case. 
And although the primary factors span across 21 violations, 37 cases or 58% uh, can be attributed to jay jaywalking. And the next highest frequency uh, is only four cases or 6%, which is failing to yield to whomever had the right of way. So this map displays the locations of each fatality since 2014, uh, which again uh, are broken down by bicyclists uh, as well as pedestrians. And as you can see that there appears to be a concentration of incidents uh, around uh, Union Avenue, California Avenue, and Brundage Lane. So take the pointer here, you can see here's Union, here's Brundage, and here's California. Before city staff began exploring new or enhanced uh, activities, it was important to first inventory what our existing efforts are. Uh, in regard to bikeways, the city has aggressively pursued infrastructure improvements over the last few years. For example, the city has recently completed or received funding to construct about 35 miles worth of bikeways throughout Bakersfield. And these improvements equate to roughly about a 25% increase in new bikeways within the city's bicycle transportation network. Uh, these improvements are also imperative since, according to Caltrans, uh, installing bike lanes reduces up to 35% of collisions. Next, the police department offers several safety programs within the community. For instance, bicycle rodeos are provided at various schools, local organizations, as well as events uh, where attendees can participate in uh, road courses designed to promote safety. Bicycle helmets and other safety equipment are also provided to those in need as well. And also the police department attends assemblies at local elementary, middle, and high schools uh, to, as a means to encourage safety awareness. Uh, next, city staff continually work with different advocacy groups and perform outreach in communities to identify safety needs. For example, the city is part of the Kern County Bicycle and uh, Pedestrian Safety Coalition, which meets, here, uh, which meets at City Hall monthly. Uh, to discuss safety concerns. This coalition is comprised of different stakeholders, including the city, the county, GET, Bike Bakersfield, the Kern Council of Governments, and others that have interest in safety. So, as displayed, city staff is continually conducting outreach to garner support for various bicycle and pedestrian projects and activities, and uh, specifically those that involve safety. The next activity, the Build-A-Bike program, is operated out of the Martin Luther King Community Center and teaches children how to build their own bikes, uh, as well as the fundamentals of bike repair, maintenance, and safety. Uh, those children who successfully complete the program may keep their customized bike and their safety equipment. The Bakersfield mobile app also encourages safer modes of alternative transportation. App users can report uh, such, uh, such issues such as traffic or, or street light outages, potholes, or other, safety, uh, other conditions that create safety concerns. Uh, finally, the city installs bicycle uh, traffic signal detection um, at, at traffic signals, which help reduce delays and increases uh, convenience and safety. In regard to pedestrian safety, most of the public uh, right-of-way has sidewalks with exception to undeveloped and some older areas within Bakersfield. And for the areas needing sidewalks since 2014, the City Council has authorized uh, approximately $8.8 .8 million in uh, community development block grant funds across 19 projects. In addition, the City has partnered with GET and the current Council governments to construct sidewalks and access ramps uh, near bus stops throughout Bakersfield. Uh, the city has received over $1.3 million for these improvements over the last few years, and I think actually the last three fiscal years, not, not including this current fiscal year. Furthermore, the city also incorporates access ramp improvements within roadway projects to improve accessibility uh, at, to sidewalks at intersections. For the next item, sidewalk evaluations, uh, we've contracted with a firm to complete the city's Americans with Disability Act transition plan. Um, and this plan evaluates certain aspects of the public right-of-way, including passive travel, intersections, curb, curb ramps, and sidewalks. And uh, city staff is currently looking, is moving into the next uh, phase of this evaluation, which includes examining approximately 200 miles uh, of high pedestrian and traffic areas. The next item, uh, school zone improvements, uh, the, the city undertakes uh, various activities 
towards the beginning of each school year. And those types of activities include uh, increased enforcement, undertaking maintenance or capital projects during the summer months uh, in order not to avoid with the school year, holding an annual back to school safety meeting for drivers within the solid waste division, and repainting uh, crosswalks around schools. The city's also been retrofitting existing high pressure sodium lights with LED fixtures uh, over the last few years. These fixtures enhance safety by reducing glare and also increasing visibility. And since 2014, the city has completed uh, over 800 uh, street lights have been retrofitted. In addition, 220 street lights are, are currently being are currently underway for an LED re uh, retrofit retrofit uh, within the Westchester and East Bakersfield areas, which are supposed to be completed in early 2018. Finally, the city has been continuously installing pedestrian countdown timers, and these are uh, these signals, which you can which are viewed in the bottom right hand of the slide, uh, contain a timer a timer display, and they count down the number of seconds left to finish uh, when you're when you're crossing the uh, the intersection or the roadway. And over the last five years, the city's received about half a million dollars in Caltrans uh, Highway uh, Safety Improvement Program, also known as uh, HSIP funds. Um, uh, towards finishing this project. And I'm happy to announce with the most recent allocation uh, that of grant funds that it will actually convert the remaining countdown timers uh, citywide um, in the near future. And, uh, and why this is important is because uh, Caltrans has identified that installing these types of timers reduces collisions by about 25%. The city has upcoming safety projects and activities as well. Uh, as previously presented, the city participated in the development of the Kern Region Active Transportation Plan, uh, which provides a blueprint for bicycle and pedestrian activities. And actually, the city contributed about $35,000 in uh, Rose Foundation grant funds towards the development of that plan as well. For the next activity, the city, along with the Bureau of Reclama Reclamation, have been working on a, a proposed six-mile uh, shared use path uh, along the Frank Kern Canal from the Kern River Parkway all the way down, or up, excuse me, all the way up to 7th Standard Road. This slide provides an aerial image of the proposed project with the, uh, the path beginning on 7th Standard Road, which is displayed up here towards, uh, on the left at the right, on the left top side of the picture. And the project uh, concludes at the Kern River Parkway, which is displayed at the bottom of the picture on the right hand side, right around here. This path uh, not only increases connectivity, but increases safety as well. Uh, and according to Caltrans, these types of improvements, uh, they reduce up to 80% of collisions. Uh, we're currently working with the Bureau of Reclamation on this project, and uh, we're working on the environmental review, and it should be completed in spring of 2018. And we anticipate uh, pursuing grant funding for this project next calendar year as well. And so here are a few renderings of the, of the project and what it could look like. And this is towards Seven Standard Road looking south. You can see the Frank Kern Canal on the left and what a proposed shared use path looks like on the right. And here is just south of the, of the uh, West Side Parkway looking north with the Frank Kern Canal on the left and what a shared use path will look like on the right. The next three projects are grant funded through Caltrans Active Transportation Program and they total approximately 3.5 million. The first project is the Downtown Bakersfield Connectivity Project, uh, which adds about 19 miles worth of new bikeways, 80 new uh, bike parking and storage uh, facilities, and establishes a bike sharing program with up to 25 stations and 100 smart bicycles. In regards to this image, the green lines represent future bikeways. Uh, grant funds are also available for this project in fiscal year 1920. However, there may be a chance to advance funds sooner than that date. The next project is uh, very similar in name. Uh, instead of uh, bicycle, just switch out pedestrian. And uh, with this project, it adds 128 access ramps, constructs 3,600 uh, linear, linear feet of sidewalk, and also uh, improves a pedestrian and median, cross, uh, a median across Chester Avenue, I think it's uh, Chester and 22nd where the GET station is. Uh, the red dots represent where the access ramps would be and the thin red lines represent where a new sidewalk would go and this purple area right here is where a pedestrian island would be. Uh, 
Oh, actually, I'm going back to this one very briefly. Uh, funding for this project is available uh, very soon, and we anticipate completing this next calendar year. The next project is the A Street Improvement Project, and uh, this project adds about 8,400 linear feet of sidewalk, 29 access, ramp, uh, access ramps, and some curb and gutter as well. Uh, the project is primarily located on A Street uh, in between Brundage Lane to the south and San Emilio uh, to the north, San Emilio Street. And San Emilio is just south of uh, California. And as displayed, the streets severely lack uh, sidewalks, and this is, um, it's really compounded by the fact that within this short, this short stretch that there's three churches and uh, three schools on this block as well. Uh, award of this project is actually on uh, this evening's council agenda for consideration. Oops. And lastly, uh, and as previously stated, the city is in the process of retrofitting its, uh, its streetlights with LED fixtures. So the question remains, uh, how can we create a safer environment for bicyclists and pedestrians moving forward? And first and foremost, I think... Uh, we're going to continue to implement our existing projects and activities uh, since we've made substantial progress over the years and we want to continue uh, this, these efforts. Uh, next, we're establishing a bicycle and pedestrian fatality investigation team. Uh, the purpose of this multi-departmental team is to examine the causes of death identify a way, and identify ways to mitigate future accidents at those same locations. For the next item, we recently submitted a Caltrans Sustainable Community uh, grant application to develop a bicycle and pedestrian safety plan. This plan would identify locations that have a high potential for collisions and recommend safety improvements at those same locations as well. Uh, the grant award should be announced in December and funds are available in spring of 2018. Next, the city will pursue additional uh, education programs. However, uh, the largest constraint with education programs is the lack of ongoing grant funding. Uh, notwithstanding, we'll submit a grant application for a comprehensive education program through Caltrans Active Transportation Program next funding cycle. So whereas you know, the infrastructure dollars always seem to be there, the, the programmatic dollars don't, are not necessarily uh, as readily available. Also, the city is going to con uh, continue to collaborate with uh, different agencies that can help promote safety. You know, just a few examples of things we may not have done in the past that we can look into is uh, the city and Caltrans can collaborate on ways to improve safety on Union, or the city and county can, can collaborate on ways to look at where there's been accidents that are on the border of uh, unincorporated islands, and we can kind of brainstorm on uh, uh, safety improvements. And finally, uh, we will continue to pursue additional grant opportunities. The city has received well over $10 million in grant funds uh, uh, for bicycle pedestrian projects uh, over the last few years, and this amount doesn't, does not include $8.8 .8 million in sidewalk in CDBG funded sidewalk projects. Uh, on the horizon, uh, the next call for Caltrans active transportation projects will be in March of 2018. And uh, it includes uh, $440 million of statewide funding, which is, uh, I believe, substantially more than any of the other funding cycles have been. And we have been successful in those funding cycles. So we're very optimistic about this next round of funding. And to conclude, city staff and I would be happy to answer any questions you may have. Vice Mayor Smith. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chris. Uh, appreciate the presentation and appreciate the work staff has done last few years i mean we've come a long way uh 35 miles of bike lanes countdown signals all throughout the city um, but we still have a problem <laughs> and and maybe we got a late start but the uh if you go back if you can to the uh map that showed the fatalities uh and you you, you even mentioned the union california corridor and I know we're applying for a grant to do a safety plan and, and you have a fatality investigation team mm -hmm. I and maybe it needs to come back to council for a vote or whatever but I'd like to see you know some focus on that particular corridor it's obviously uh, a problem area and if it just needs you know more lighting light it up if it if it needs uh, the hawk signals for more crossings or something, if, if we could put something in to 
next year's capital improvement budget to, to improve the safety of, of those two corridors, uh, that would be good. So if staff would look at that and if it needs to come back to council or whatever it needs to do, I would appreciate it. So with that, I would make the motion to receive and file, I guess, the report. We have some council members who would like to speak. Council Member Freeman. Thank you. Chris, uh, part of this is just, uh, I want to be sure I heard right, that we will have countdown timers on all of our street lights within the near future, is that like a year or? Correct, I, I would defer to the Public Works Department for that, but I know we've received funding to, uh, to complete that project. As far as how long it takes, I, 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 I defer to Nick or his staff. Um, Council Member Freeman, yes, we're, we're, it'll be pr processed over the next two years. We, are, we do have funding sources, but um, we are pro uh, working through the next two funding cycles to complete. That's a lot of crosswalks. I was just, yeah. I mean, the magnet, that magnitude is huge. We, uh, those are great. I'm glad to hear that. Are they um, a requirement if you are new development and you have to put in a street light? Is that now part of the cost of the street light? That's so correct. Our, our new standards require the installation with the countdown timers. We have a roughly 425 to 430 traffic signals within the city of Bakersfield. So within the next two years, we'll have every one of those signalized intersections with um, the countdown timers on them. Uh, and um, I noticed when we were looking at the accident sheet, it looks like the majority of them take place on um, arterials. Is that true? Or do we not even have bike lanes if it isn't an arterial? That, do we only have bike lanes on arterials? We have, we have bike lanes on arterials as well as collectors. And, and on collectors. Yeah, and I don't know if we have any on local roads, but I, no, I I've been maybe class on three local. on local roads or we're planning on some yeah. bike routes uh, on local roads. Correct. We do have class three that do travel through some of our local roadways. Mm -hmm. um, class three are um, shared roads. Uh, there's a marked as a bike route, but not it mm -hmm. does not have a designated bike yeah. lane. Yeah. It just seemed like the... Heavity, heavily traveled arterials or high activity was where all these fatalities were. So just as we, this is more of a future thought, if there's something in the way we construct arterials moving forward that was a much safer way for the bike lanes, I mean, I think we should be thinking just to continue to put these five foot bike lanes in that, I mean, with 55 miles an hour, three lanes, it's, it's pretty dangerous. Um, and to continue to put miles and miles of them every year, knowing it's just an inherent, just, when there's a lot of traffic, it's kind of dangerous, that maybe we can look at street design on arterials moving forward that would, you know, help with that. That's, I guess, just for public works, just something to think about. Thank you. Council Member Gonzalez. Thank you, Mayor Goh. Uh, Mr. Geary, thank you so much for your presentation, and I commend the staff um, for all of their hard work in improving bicycle and pedestrian safety throughout the city for the past several years, and commend Vice Mayor Smith for uh, his leadership in this effort. Um, in your report, you noted uh, the collaboration between the city and uh, with uh, California Walks, and uh, Vice Mayor Smith and I participated in the workshop in East Bakersfield recently, and um, I know they came up with their uh, recommendations to improve pedestrian and bicycle safety for the community of East Bakersfield. And they have a list of recommendations in there, including a um, recommendation to establish crosswalk installation guidelines. And so I wondered if um, staff had uh, developed some recommendations and analysis to present to the council and at what point we might hear more. Sure. Uh, Honorable, Honorable Mayor and uh, Council Member Gonzalez, I was actually at that, uh, that event as well. Yep. It was very good and it was, uh, it was very informative. Um, I, I have not, I, I received the report, I have not looked at the report. So um, from, from the city manager's office, we, I haven't uh, looked at, uh, at crosswalks, perhaps um, the Public Works Department has in the past. Honorable, Honorable Mayor, Council uh, Member Gonzalez, we, we do, we are currently going through our design standards. We do follow all of MUTCD design standards for crosswalks. Uh, 
through the um, process of the 24th Street, we were informed of some new uh, standards we weren't aware of. Mm -hmm. So um, it is always a learning process because the technology is changing so rapidly, especially in the bicycle and pedestrian fields, uh, complete streets areas. So um, we're constantly sending staff to uh, various trainings in the complete streets program. Um, so um, we we try we we try to follow all the state furnished guidelines that we can. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, the second question I had was for Chief Martin. Um, Chief, uh, recently in September, the CHP conducted a pedestrian education enforcement action in crosswalks. It, has the BPD engaged in such an effort, and what what is the possibility for a future action? Honorable Mayor, Council Member Gonzalez, yes, we've actually uh, participated in those types of uh, enforcement actions as well. Um, just recently, our community relations unit completed a uh, crosswalk and bicycle safety PSA mm -hmm. that's running. So, yeah, we're doing those same types of uh, enforcement actions. Great. Awesome. Thank you. Council Member Parlier. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Chris, do we have any light comparisons with cities our size um, as far as their statistics, as far as fatalities and what's going on in those areas? You know, the, the, no, I, I haven't. The, the statistics that I've seen were based on metropolitan areas. I haven't seen anything related to Bakersfield uh, as far as a comparison to other cities. That It's something we could do, though, in the future. Okay, thanks. And the, uh, the last, uh, it's not really a question, more of a statement. I, I know the police department's kind of going in this direction, but I would encourage uh, city manager staff to uh, continue to reevaluate the reestablishment of a police motor unit. I know there's some inherent dangers, uh, you know, having that, but I think it's outweighed by the, uh, the safety aspects of having that type of unit. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gary. You have a motion? To receive and file, please cast your votes. Motion is unanimously approved. Next item, please. Under closed session, we have conference with legal counsel, potential litigation. Two matters regarding letter of October 9th, 2017 from Californians Aware and letter of October 18th, 2017 from First Amendment Coalition. Move Mr. To, Mayor? Move to adjourn the closed session. We're adjourned to closed session.